We continue to bring you in-depth coverage of Blizzard 2013 on WPRI 12. After Friday's blizzard, tens of thousands of residents are still without power today. National Grid and other companies say it could be days before power crews get to everyone. Rhode Island state officials are preparing a briefing right now from the State Emergency Management Agency. And uh, we're going to get to the governor's uh, news conference at the EMA in Cranston uh, shortly as uh, they're going to update us on the uh, conditions. Of course, the uh, big problem right now is still the power outages in the state of Rhode Island. And of course, a lot of the roads, especially those back roads, are still are not plowed. So we're going to get an update from That's the governor. That's right. And we do have those warming centers out there. But, you know, you can't bring your pets and there's no guarantee you're going to get a cot or a place to stay. So they're asking that everyone, uh, if you are headed to one of those places, to be sure and uh, bring as many items with you to make yourself as comfortable as possible. But it's really uh, the travel ban has been lifted but it's slow going out there and uh, some of the overpasses are not completely clear. The side roads are not completely clear. They're working on it and they hope to have everything up and running on Monday. Now we've been watching uh, the storm's impact on social media as people share their experiences, good or bad. We're going to check in with WPRI.com reporter Ted Nisi. He's in our storm impact center for what he's observing. And uh, Ted, I know everyone is anxious to hear what the governor has to say and when their power is going to come back on. This is the first news conference of the day, and so people are looking for information from the governor, from National Grid, and everyone else. I will say, uh, looking at Facebook and Twitter right now, uh, most of the people talking are the ones who don't have power but maybe still have a cell phone saying their homes are getting down to 51 degrees, 50 degrees, 49 degrees. That's, again, inside people's homes because the heat has gone out. So many of them are trying to figure out, you know, do they have enough blankets? Are they ready? And as you said, Susan, shelters are now opening up around the area. We're collecting that list of shelters shelters on WPRI.com. If you have friends or family you know are lacking power, you can direct them that way or look it up yourself and share with them where the shelters are opening. We're also getting more information in from the cities and towns about what they're doing. Uh, Providence has set up a snow hotline. Mayor Angel Tavares uh, said just a few minutes ago they are taking questions about the storm. If you have those, you can call 680-8080. Again, for Providence residents with snow questions, 680-8080. Warwick Police have asked uh, residents to be advised that Route 2 northbound Bald Hill Road is shut down in the area of the Cranston City Line. This bulletin came by about 45 minutes ago. Uh, there were wires down. National Grid was at the scene. That's a problem in, in various parts of the area where the, the heavy, heavy snow, even with the winds dying down, is weighing down these, uh, these, these uh, telephone lines, the electricity lines, and that's part of the problem. That's one reason they're still concerned about whether we could have more outages. That said, we have our real-time outage tracker on WPRI.com. The numbers have fallen a bit. I'm looking here. The last update from National Grid came in at 523 p.m. and that was 161,000. That is down from there. So uh, that's what we're looking at right now and I'll toss it back to you in the studio. Yeah. All right. Yeah, thank you, you Ted. You and Governor Lincoln really Chafee is at the podium. Well, Let's go live to the EMA. The state have hit the roads very well, but we still have a large number of Rhode Islanders still without power. And with the weather forecast to be extremely cold tonight with high winds and low temperatures, we do have our concerns. And working with the municipalities, uh, the shelters are available. Transportation is available. We've been communicating that throughout the state. Anybody without power has access to those warm shelters and the transportation if necessary. Anybody that has any doubts, please dial 211 or if it's an emergency, 911. I've traveled all over the state. It seems as though the storm levels, the snow levels are fairly uniform throughout the state. The higher power outages are along the coastal bands and uh, those shelters, I visited them today. Uh, very few Rhode Islanders seem to be availing themselves of those shelters, so they're finding either friends or family uh, to get warm if we're without power or hunkering down in their houses. The advice to give if you're staying home is keep the water running to some extent as these temperatures drop so your pipes don't freeze. And I'd like to turn to uh, Joe here, who is head of maintenance, DOT maintenance, who's done a good job, Joe Baker, in keeping our state roads clear and working with the municipalities. Joe, you want to talk about our road situation? Certainly. Thank you, Governor. Uh, right now, state highways are in uh, much better shape than they were earlier this morning. Uh, we still have some snowpack on some of those roadways, on some of the secondary roadways especially. Uh, exit ramps are uh, rather tight as you start to get onto the highways or the off ramps, so visibility is somewhat limited. 
Uh, we also have a lot of power outages, and with that comes traffic signals that are out of power. So uh, a large number of traffic signals on the state highways are also without power. So if you do need to be out on the highways, uh, please use extreme caution, reduce your speeds. Uh, they may look uh, nice and clean in some locations, but you may come across snowpack as you continue along your, uh, your trip. Uh, so really reduce your speeds if you're going to be out there, uh, and please proceed cautiously. Thanks, Joe. Tim, I'd like to turn to National Grid. They're out there working hard. We'd like to have many more customers online uh, than we have. Still a large number without power, as uh, those who are without power know. We're working hard. It's never fast enough, but the goal is uh, Monday night for full restoration. That seems too far away, but we're going to be getting large blocks on. I'll let Tim address that. Tim Horan from National Grid. Tim. Thanks, Governor. Uh, in about seven hours of restoration today, we've got about 45,000 customers back. We've had some major transmission lines that have been down affecting the East Bay and the Quidnick Island. We will have those back in service tonight and get another 60,000 customers back. So we're looking for very big numbers to come back of customers. And with this type of storm, what you're going to see is we get these major transmission lines back, we're going to get large amounts of customers back quicker than we've had in some of the other instances. We've got over 300 personnel, crews, line crews, tree crews working out there today in addition to transmission crews. Our folks will continue through the night thanks to DOT and all the towns for clearing the roads. We have another 300 line crews, 600 personnel coming in tomorrow. So we will have hundreds of personnel working tomorrow to get many more customers back. We know there are some extreme conditions out there. It's going to be a cold night. Avail yourselves of the shelters. We have hundreds of people out there, and we will continue to do that to get the customers back. Thank you, Governor. Thanks, Tim. Colonel O'Donnell, on some of the safety issues out there, you want to speak to any of the safety issues uh, for Rhode Islanders? Colonel? Thank you, Governor. Um, certainly. I think it's important that the Rhode Islanders know that um, our responders, DOT and National Grid, are out there, and it's important that we protect them. The National Guard and State Police stand strong to make sure that people drive slowly. The speed limit is 55, 65 in different areas on the interstates, but that doesn't mean you should go that speed. Um, you should go well below the speeds. Conditions require to reduce speed, to make sure we don't have accidents. As Joe Baker mentioned earlier, the highways have three or four lanes or two or three lanes, but the breakdown lanes are limited because of the amount of snow. So it's really important that people go slow. As you enter onto the access highways or exiting, you can have some issues, so you have to be very careful that you can see because the, the snow is so high. So we're still asking that people stay off the roads as best as possible. They don't need to be there. Thank you. Let's get through this storm as safely as possible. Please pay attention to some of this, this advice, especially driving slowly. Uh, you, you'll be on firm pavement, and then uh, you'll hit uh, packed snow pavement, it's packed snow on the roads. And uh, so please adhere to this advice. Colonel, uh, General McBride, anything you want to add? Real quickly. Thank you, Governor. Uh, as we progress, the first thing I'd like to begin with is the, uh, is the support from the citizens of the state of Rhode Island when the governor uh, put the travel ban down. It actually allowed uh, public works people to get to addressing the local roads uh, more quickly and, and keeping the vehicles off the road. So hopefully we've made great progress in that. Uh, the concern all along was the temperatures dropping today. Uh, and providing access to the community members to these uh, warming shelters and the five shelters that are set up by the Red Cross. Uh, as noted earlier, that ban has been lifted so that folks can get to those shelters and get some warmth and maybe, uh, you know, get a warm meal or even more so charge their cell phone or what have you so they can communicate with their loved ones. Uh, as we move forward, the Guard members are transitioning now from direct support, uh, working with the state police. Uh, and National Grid as we move to provide some greater support to the communities and the EMA directors uh, throughout the state. And we'll be making that transition over the next uh, 12 to 24 hours. Uh, so again, we appreciate the patience. Uh, keep in mind that the public works uh, folks in each one of the communities now need to still go back and dress up all of those roads. And as was mentioned, the intersections, they'll become problematic. One of the things that we're working very closely with DOT is the signalized intersections. Uh, along with the state police and how we address those as more and more traffic uh, move towards the roadways uh, over the next 12 hours. Thank you. Thank you, General. Still with the power loss, a lot of the signals are obviously without power, so as you approach intersections, uh, no signals are active in some of these areas without power. 
We have Congressman Cicilline and Congressman Langevin here, Senator Reid and Senator Whitehouse have called in from Washington where they are offering their assistance from the federal level. Thank you, gentlemen. I've been there always with us on all these events we've been through. Uh, Secretary Costantino from Human Services dealing with some of the issues we have out there with our hospitals and nursing homes. And with that, I will take any questions. No, we have enough crews. It's, it's getting, to these, uh, getting to these lines. So in some cases in Cranston right now, we've had to bring in heavy front-end loaders just to get the snow out of the way to get in there and change poles. So we've got some critical locations, a lot of snow. We're, we're, we're going through those areas. So it's getting at the, the equipment. That's why we're, we're, we've got so many folks addressing it. But that's the biggest challenge right now. With a hurricane, everything comes through. We've got free access. We move in and we get to do the work. Um, it's been very challenging, but we look at t tonight, roads are cleared, we can get through with uh, the amount of people we have in here tomorrow, um, we'll make a big dent in getting more customers back. But it could be several days for some people just because of the access. It will, it, it will be. Some of the outlying areas that are very tough to get to, what we're doing is getting the transmission lines to substations and getting blocks of 5, 10, and 15,000 customers back as quickly as we can. That's what we're trying to do right now. In addition to that, all the you know, critical facilities, hospitals, airport, and those things, working to get those back and making sure they're in power. So would you advise if somebody, say, listening on the radio right now, they're sitting in the dark without heat, that they assume that they may be up for a few days and they should make other plans to change their heat? They should. You heard from the folks here, the heating centers out there. You've got to be safe. You've got to look at your particular situation. Um, and, and we'll have these... Uh, these ETRs out there, but you got to do what's what's the most safe out there. Generators, got to be very safe with those, and you got to be safe with parked cars. Uh, we, there's an instance we, we think we've heard about in Boston where there's a tragedy. Someone uh, died in a car because the exhaust didn't come out, uh, was blocked by a snowbank. So you really got to think through safety. We've got no one public hurt, no one workers hurt. We've had that through all our storms. We want to continue to stress that. We're, we're out there working. We're going to work through the night. We've got to be safe, but in, to get people back. What's tougher to deal with, the aftermath of a hurricane or aftermath of what we just went through now? Well, they're all challenging. And, and right now, when you have folks working 18 hours a day out in these conditions, um, it, it, it is a challenge. But our folks are ready. They're dedicated. We've got folks from Tennessee and Pennsylvania, along with our personnel. Uh, these folks are here to serve the customers, and we're going to continue to do that 24 by 7. Uh, about 140,000 customers. We've got, a, we've got 45,000 customers back. About 140, 145,000 are still out. Um, roughly 25 to 30 percent of our customers. We've got over 300,000 in service. And are there any sections of the state that seem to be uh, particularly, I mean, Quidnick Island, you mentioned, is one big area. Yes. But anywhere else, Providence? Uh, well, Quidnick Island, down along, down along the westerly Narragansett, down along the shore there where the, where the heavy winds uh, really came through. Um, but we're making progress. In Portsmouth, where we've got a couple of the major transmission lines out, they had 9,000 customers out this morning. They're down to around 1,500. So you see, as we, we get the major lines back, we can get more of these towns back quicker. But it's Quidnick Island, East Bay, and down along the uh, southern coast. Midnight Monday. Yes. Any other questions? Gentlemen, what's the status of the airport right now? The airport will be taking incoming flights starting at 6 o'clock. Uh, no outgoing. Until tomorrow or? Don't know the answer to that. For, For tonight, anyway. Governor, what are your experiences out on the road today, the last night? Excuse me? What have your experiences been so far last night and today? Oh, this is a bad storm with high winds and now with temperatures dropping tonight. Uh, tonight's going to be a difficult night uh, as people without power. Uh, and uh, please be safe. All these uh, generators, be careful with them. If you have uh, other sources of heat you might be using out, just be careful. Uh, this is going to be a tough night. The forecast, I believe, is for wind chill and low temperatures, may, maybe minus 10. So uh, please adhere to the advice that's being given here and uh, avail yourself of the shelters or have to commend those that are 
helping their neighbors. Please keep that up. Look after your elderly neighbors in your neighborhoods. This is going to be a cold night tonight. Yeah, on the bright side, uh, that's one of the bright sides. This occurred on the weekend, so we can get a lot done on the weekend, and also people have more time to help each other. Is there anything that's being done to um, help the folks that are snowed in and stuck that you know need to get to a shelter that can't? Maybe perhaps the elderly. Yes, dial two one one or nine one one if it's an emergency. I was in Tiverton, and a woman had a tree over her. Uh, street and so it had not been plowed at all. It was up to uh, thighs and she wanted to get to the shelter. Her power was off and so the National got a, got a Humvee in there, got her into the Humvee, got her to the shelter. Uh, she dialed 211 I believe and that was in Tiverton. Uh, so we'll get anybody to the shelter that needs it somehow. State Police has uh, ability also to help out. Well, my, my worry on Monday is uh, the forecast is rain, and so we're worried about now clearing the catch basins. Temperature going up on Monday, rain coming is the forecast from what I'm understanding. So we're trying to give some of our crews a, a break so they can be prepared to clear the catch basins and prevent flooding if we do have rain on Monday. How this affects some of the flood prone areas? Temperatures going up, snow melting? Yeah, yeah. That we're, we're really focused on what we have to do tonight, but we're also thinking ahead to Monday and resting some of our crews so we can be ready to clear those catch basins. We don't have flooding. Are you considering trucking some of the snow out of here? Oh yeah, yeah, we're we're that's being done now. I know it's early, but do you have any ballpark figure on the toll that this will take financially on the state of Rhode Island? No, I don't yet. I don't yet. But the federal delegation has always been there. If we can avail ourselves of disaster type money. They've been there all, the, all along and we'll be working with Governor Patrick and Governor Malloy in Connecticut, Massachusetts as we have been all through this storm. And Thank a you. Obviously the number one concern is sorry to interrupt you. No, go ahead. What would you say to um, the folks sitting at home right now? Post-storm, how can we stay safe? Yeah, how can we stay safe? This is going to be a cold night, so uh, help each other's neighbors in the neighborhood. You know somebody elderly, check on them, make sure they're okay. Uh, that's what we do as Rhode Islanders during an emergency event. This is one minus 10 degree wind chill factor. That's a cold, cold night. If you're without power, uh, check on each other, help each other out. Thank you very much. Good team effort. We've been watching a live news conference from the EMA headquarters in Cranston. The two biggest things that we heard out of this news conference, 140,000 people are still without power, and the other one is the roadways. That's right, about 25 to 30 percent of the state still without power, but we know that tonight they're working on getting those transformers back, especially in the East Bay and the Quidnick area, and they're saying that as many as 60,000 people in the East Bay could have their power back on tonight, so that is good news, but they're giving us a hard date of Monday at midnight when all of this is supposed to be back on. And if you know someone who's in need, who doesn't need to be staying in a cold home tonight, make arrangements for them. Call 211. They're saying that they will have transportation provided and that they can take these people to the shelters. All right, we're coming back at 6 p.m. with a full update on the aftermath of Blizzard 2013.